uh, I wouldn't say that about Lance. Uh, um, you know, I'm riding an old man bike, you know, you know, electric bike. I might be as I might be faster than a YouTube uh, influencer named Russ's right. Okay. So, uh, but I do enjoy the e-bike quite a bit. Oh yeah. And you forgot about my swimming expertise too. I'm the, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm better than Johnny Weismiller. If you remember who Johnny Weismiller was. He was a Tarzan. Okay. He was a, he was Tarzan, you know, the Back in the thirties, yeah, he was Olympic. He was Olympic swimmer. Yeah, so a lot of his records wasn't broken till Phelps broke them, you know, a while back. Okay, oh yeah, he was great. He was great. Yeah, cheated and Jane. Me, yeah, me Tarzan. You Jane. Yeah, and they had a boy, and his son was named Boy. Yeah, they had a son named yeah Johnny Shelfield. Yeah, the, the yeah it was named Boy. Well, considering what they wore, I mean Johnny Weismiller, you know, he didn't hardly wear anything, and Jane was a much better. Okay, you know, but you know Johnny was Weismiller for the day was a big guy. I mean, he was. Very muscular and you know and and a hell of a swimmer, man. Oh yeah, he was a hell of a swimmer. Yeah, hell of Jose. No, I don't. Oh, that guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. His name's Jose. I thought it was like Christopher or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spit spitting image. He's a spitting image. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, uh, they did. Okay. And, you know, that was one that spilled the beans, you know, Arnold and Maria was in counseling and it, the counseling sessions got to a point where, you know, you know, the moderator would say, well, Maria, is there anything you want to say? And she basically asked him, you know, is Jose, you know, uh, your son? Yeah. Did you have an affair with the housekeeper and his son? And Arnold says, yeah, I did. Okay. Because, because the resemblance even 10 years ago, 12 years ago was so remarkable. Yeah, he is now. Yeah, he's been yeah, he's been working out. Yeah. I think he's done I think he's done some movies too. I think he's done maybe a some low budget movies, you know, straight to DVD. You know, and like Yeah, and, uh, but, you know, they, over the years, there have been so many sequels to Terminator, and they've twisted it so many ways. I think they need to set it on the shelf for maybe a decade or so, and then bring it back, you know? You know? Exactly.
Yeah. Yeah, she, she also had a twin sister, uh, Linda Hamilton, and she was in, uh, yeah, she was in Terminator 2, you know, there was a scene where they, you know, that she's having a flashback or a dream, and the, the Holocaust happens, and there's some kids playing in the playground, and that was that was little Han Linda Hamilton's sister in real life. She's passed on since then, okay? But yeah, yeah. And you know, Arnold's got a son that's in the movies too, Patrick. He's made, I don't know, half a dozen movies. But he favors a he, he favors a Kennedy though. Yeah, he favors a Kennedy, you know. Uh and Yeah, but he's got Larry David's wife for his for his real wife is Cheryl on Kirby Enthusiasm, okay? You know, and everybody loves Cheryl Hines, you know. Putting up with Larry David on the show all the time, you know. You know so but uh yeah, um you're talking about Terminators. I saw something today. Do you remember a guy named Clayton Morris that used to be on Fox News, Fox in the morning, Fox and Friends? Well, when we get done here, go to YouTube and look up a show called Redacted. Okay, and him and his wife have a show, and he is in the UFOs and stuff. And, you know, Congress is, there's a testimony. Everybody's going to come in and testify in front of Congress this week, right, about UFOs. Okay, and this guy, he's got on there, he's got a guy that ran for governor. In Illinois, he has a 1997 film that shows an interview with a with a alien. Okay, they say it's factual. It kind of looks like it, you know. And the deal was was that the alien was like half half um, and um, humanoid and half machine or half, you know, yeah, because he didn't have all these organs and stuff, but it looked like he was half half and half and and then and that alien has yeah and i no i i, I did work with some guys that worked at that worked at uh area 51 because that's where they had up when when the b2 yeah yeah and they wore red hats okay and they they were called red hats. Yeah, and when the B two was a was a concept, you know the the old deal is they I think they were in like Henderson, Nevada, or somewhere out there, or Tonopah. And then every day they'd get in a bus and they'd go out to the site and they they would do their you know all their tests. And so yeah, I know I knew some of those guys. Gene Golden was. A, I, matter of fact, I worked for Gene Golden for a while, and he couldn't say anything. But uh, that was that was kind of an elite group. Okay, I worked with I worked with them at Edwards Air Force Base when I was there, and they were kind of they did all the flight testing and stuff. Yeah, and then and then I worked and then I worked with a guy that was a low observable engineer. We did liaison support in the evening, and Randy told me a bunch of stuff that they did out there. Yeah. Well, as you can see, you can, uh, we're not doing too good. Um, uh, we were on a roll till we got in Chicago Friday and Saturday. We got beat both days. And as you can see by the TV screen behind me, we're getting beat again. Yeah, and then after that, we go in. We were like, we finally got out of the cellar. Okay, so Pittsburgh's in the cellar. And we were about two games behind Chicago. 
you know, they're playing at the friendly confines in Wrigley Field. And, um, you know, they there were some questionable umpire calling at the plate, especially yesterday. There was a big argument there and some other things. And, you know, the the strike zone, like I see on the screen here, next to the video here, that's the strike zones. And it was definitely like, God, six inches outside, you know, and it cost us a game, you know, and we're just getting blasted today. We're moving on to Arizona. Tomorrow night we'll be moving on to Arizona. Wainwright is, is allegedly starting to come back, and he's going to be on a pitch count, so... We'll, we'll see how it goes, but eh, we'll see what happens. But uh, tr the, the trading deadline is a big deal right now, the big trading deadline, and we can talk about that. Look at Baltimore. Look at Baltimore. They got a game. Yep. Yeah, they're looking to uh, Baltimore's name comes up a lot in the trade rumors. They need somebody, you know, they, they need some players to kind of put them over the top. So it looks like, you know, they're they're for real. Yeah. Not too far. It, it can go back and forth. Cardinals played Tampa Bay. Now, we beat Tampa Bay in St. Louis last week. Um, I think all three games. We were on a roll. We won like six games in a row, the Cardinals did. and um, But uh, Tampa Bay still, their pitching is just outstanding. I mean, their starting pitching and their relief pitching is just fantastic. You know, so, I mean, um, they're looking to add a bat. You know, they have a second baseman that they traded over the winter from uh, the Twins. And this guy, he won the, the American League batting champion. His name is Araz. Okay. And uh, he, he was he was hitting close to 400 most of the year. And now he's slumped a little bit. But the Cardinals couldn't get that guy out for nothing. Okay. And he was, he, you know, he's not a home run hitter. You know, he's a single, double type of guy you know but he can hit he can hit that's for sure yeah the, um toronto and the cardinals made a trade within the last 24 hours um uh, we traded a uh cuban had been with the cardinals for a couple of years his name was um cabrera and um he originally came out that they designated him. They designated him for assignment, which is called DFA. Okay, but now they turn around and it came out they traded him to Toronto for a catcher that you know it was really insignificant. I think the catcher was hitting like one ninety one in the minors. Supposed to be a pretty good defensive catcher, but he's twenty six years old, which is pretty old to still be in the minors. And I think they just wanted to dump. Cabrera's contract because he was working, but you know, he, he had some problems with the uh, manager, you know, uh, last, see, last, earlier, was it this, yeah, earlier this year or last year. Okay. They wanted to take him out of the game and he didn't want to come out and he bounced the ball in front of the mound, in front of the manager, when, you know, when they do the little circle around there. And, oh, uh, he's had some problems. He's been up and down. So, one time, a couple of years ago, he's pretty good, but I think he's he needed to change the scenery. Yeah, yeah. Boston's a big surprise. Everybody kind of picked Boston, you know, it'd be last place this time and maybe 20 games out. But they've they've played good. They played good.
Mm-hmm. No, it was, it was, uh, Cleveland. You want to scroll your screen for me? Yeah. yeah. It's going to be back and forth. It's going to be back and forth. Um, I'm surprised, you know, Detroit is doing so well, but they're only six and a half. I mean, they, they got a chance for a wild card slot. Detroit does. Um, I think it's going to be between Minnesota and Cleveland. Um, and uh, White Sox, man. You know, only 28 wins. If they break thirty games, if they break if they break forty games this year, that would be a successful year for them. They'll try to bring George Britt back. Yeah, battling back and forth. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to go back and forth. You know, as we get in September, there's going to be some interdivisional play. Okay, so these guys will be knocking each other out for about a month. Okay, and so we'll see what happens. But definitely one of them is going to make the wild card for sure. You know. Um, there's some trade talk between the Cardinals and Seattle. There's, you know, there's seven and a half out. It's not, you know, they could get hot. They could come back. But, um, you know, the, you know, I can't remember. You hear all kinds of names, but uh, I think they want some pitching. Um, Cardinals have got some pay pitchers that are going to be free agents this year. The guy pitched today, they got knocked out around the park. Um, Montgomery. He's a free agent, pretty good pitcher, left-hander. Okay, and then we got Jack Flaherty. Jack Flaherty is a Cardinal. He's pitched pretty good this year. He's young, and reportedly he's from the West Coast, and he wants to go back to the West Coast. So it doesn't look like the Cardinals are going to change, going to sign him. Okay, this year on the free agent, so they're going to just you know. And so uh, anyway, though. They'll make that deal. I don't know if they're going to make that deal or not. We'll see what what happens. You know, I don't. I don't think. I don't think they're going to make the deal myself. Yeah. Yeah. The Angels. You know, the big deal is Otani. You know. There's all kinds of rumors about him leaving the Angels. And, and you know, and he's having a banner year. Uh, you know, you know, he can go either way. He can either pitch or hit. And it does very both very well. Um, uh, you know, they, whoever makes the deal with him will probably have to give up a number of ball players, probably another team, you know. And and um so and then they'll have to pay him. They'll have to figure out a way to sign him. So, you know, Otani, he may go to some team like the Angels, I mean, to the Yankees or something, and the Yankees get back in it, or the Dodgers. Rumor has it he may be going to the Dodgers. And, you know, that's, that's right there. So, you know, he just has to drive up to North L.A. instead of Anaheim where he's at now, so. You know, it, that could happen. And the Dodgers have a lot of money. So that, that could happen. Oakland, a typical Oakland year. And they'll, whatever free agents they got, they're going to be, they're going to be in the market. They're going to be, they're going to be trading away. Still on top. Still got everything you need. Pitching, hitting, and fielding. Okay. And they got a decent, they got a good manager. Phillies are making some moves now, you know. Um, you could see Otani maybe go to Philadelphia. They could use him. And, but, you know, they've got such a high payroll now that I don't, 
they might get him for the stretch drive and then take their chances on free agent when he comes up this year. But, you know, they're, they're pretty close. They may go for him. So what were we, they 11 and a half games out? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's, that's a lot to catch up. Yeah. Miami's having a good year. A lot of ex Cardinals on that team. Managers and ex Cardinal. Um, you know, they were in St. Louis also, and they it's a good team, a good organization. Yeah, and that's a big disappointment. They were supposed to be they spent a lot of money on free agents over this over the winter, and they were supposed to be on top. Not the case. They just really had a bad year. You go back to their their relief pitcher got hurt in the World Baseball Classic, and uh, he's he's out for the year, and and so they they pitching, and then you know the polar bear, he's been hurt just about all year too. So I you know just they're out of it. You know they're going to be they're going to be selling some contracts. Washington, you know they're rebuilding. They've been rebuilding for a couple of years now. They're getting close. I saw them play the Cardinals for the series. They got some ball players on that team, okay. And they're they're young. They're very very young. And there's a player on there, and I forget his name, but he looks like a 15 year old kid. But he's fast, and he can, he, you know, he can run, and he can hit, and he can field. And uh, he's only like twenty-one years old. So they got some, they got some decent ball players. It's going to take them a year or two to, maybe next year. Yeah, you want to, yeah, scroll your screen again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Cincinnati, which is kind of surprising still. You know, Milwaukee, uh, Yelich is having a very good year this year. You know, he was about three years ago, he won Most Valuable Player, and they thought, oh, wow, you know, he's going to be the next superstar. And since then, he's fallen off, but this year he's he's back. He, he lost his power, and then all of a sudden, I guess he found it. Uh, he had some back, he's had some back problems. So Yellage and they got a couple good pitchers, you know, uh, and uh, they're going to be free agents this year too. So, uh, you know, you know, Milwaukee's done some strange things. They they had a, the best reliever in baseball this time last year, and they and but he was going to be a free agent, and they traded him away. And Josh Hader to San Diego, they may dump one of their superstar pitchers in order to get some good prospects. I don't know. But, you know, they're – maybe they think they can win without this pitcher. I don't know. But they – you know, the Milwaukee's going to be at the top of the division. And Cincinnati, man, I am surprised that Cincinnati's still there. But, um, you know, they – but uh, they're playing good. You know, Joey Volto, he – Joey Volto's back. And, you know, he's he's a senior citizen. But uh, you might get some production out of him. Yeah, he's like 37. Yeah. It is for baseball. Yeah, it was it was it was hope, you know, we got beat you know, we we played like I said a while ago, we played at Rickley Field over the weekend and you know, that was you know, that's always an experience, okay? And Friday and Saturday were just, you know, slugfest. Whoever, you know, you know, and we had a couple rain delays Friday night and Saturday. So the game's dragged on today. Now the game's over with now. Cardinals got beat. And I was hoping that they would slide in Chicago, maybe take two out of three or all, all three games, and then we would be in that place. But wasn't meant to be, so... You know, yeah. So, yeah, they're on free fall. I mean, that's everybody kind of predicted that's where they're going to be. Uh, they got a good young team, but 
Got a good story to tell you about Wrigley Field that I heard over the weekend is that the old, okay, the old Wrigley Field, it was remodeled like in 2003 or 2002 or so. They spent like a billion dollars on Wrigley Field. You know, it was built in 1910, Wrigley Field was, right? And nobody had done anything to it. And Wrigley, the bubblegum guy, he never spent any money on the stadium. So it was literally falling apart. As a matter of fact, they, one of the girders, you know, those old stadiums have the girders, you know, that hold up the roofs and stuff. Well, that actually on the off season that year, the, the, it actually cracked and broke and, and, you know, it was a danger. Okay. And they thought the whole place was going to be condemned, but the family that owns it, Cubs now, okay, they put, they convinced the city of Chicago and so they got some money and they put like a billion dollars. They went back and they revamped everything. Well, back in the old days, back in the old days and in Wrigley Field, the visitor's clubhouse was just, it was a hell. It was, it was a hell. They had one shower head in the shower. Okay. And it barely got any water out. So when the players, when they took a shower, there'd be like three or four of them in there at a time on a, a shower head that had been rusted out a long time ago and was barely getting any water out, okay? But that was just one thing. The other thing was there was a, there was a, a whirlpool that got put in back in the 60s, and it went bad, and they had it in the hallway outside the clubhouse for like 30 years, and nobody moved it, Okay. That was always another joke. Hey, is that rope? You know, you hear these old time ball players. Hey, is that rope pool still there? The visitors clubhouse in, in Wrigley Field. Yeah, it's still there. Well, the latest story is Cardinals got a player named, well, he's a broadcaster now named Jim Edmonds. Okay. And they were telling the story that, you know, back in the day, well, they've always put on spreads. You know, you know, at the end of the meal, at the end of the game, the players come in. And they have a big old smorgasbord full of food. Well, back in the day, they would just serve junk food. It'd be like pizzas or hamburgers and stuff like that. Now it's all nutritious, right? Okay. Well, back then when Jim Edmonds was playing, and he was playing in the early 2000s, back in the 90s and stuff. Okay. We went to Wrigley Field, in the visitor's clubhouse. There was always a big, big bowl of chili, big old pot full of chili. You know, huge, yeah. And the chili was really good. Had all kinds of meat in it and all kinds of stuff. It was very good. It was very popular. But then the players would eat it, and they'd get sick that night back at the hotel room. Okay? So one of the players, and I forget who the guy was, he says, I wonder if they ever changed the chili around here. So what he did before the Cardinals left Chicago, he put a golf ball inside the chili pot okay and so the cardinals left town well about a month later the cardinals came back into chicago and the cardinal reached his hand into the coffee in the, in the chili pot and guess what the golf ball was still in the chili pot yeah 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 so that's that's the reason why you know there's always stories about wrigley field you know No, no. And it might have been the same chili, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Dodger. Yeah, Dodgers. Uh, you know, they have a, you know, they're very, very well financed. And so if I think Otani is going to go anywhere, I think it's going to go to the Dodgers. The Dodgers has a reputation to have a fantastic farm system. So I would not be surprised to see the Angels and the Dodgers make a trade for maybe a half a dozen prospects in their minor system, the minor league system, and maybe somebody else that's pretty good. 
doesn't fit in the Dodgers' plans to the Angels. And um, and Otani comes over to helps the Dodgers win. Okay, because Arizona is not going to do it. I mean, Arizona is not a is not a a big spender. Okay, so it's not going to be Arizona. I think the Dodgers are probably going to pick up Otani. And they got you know minimal lead four games you know that's four games is nothing for Arizona they can they can pick that up so Dodgers need some help yeah uh, you know like I said a while ago Cardinals going to go into Arizona tomorrow so uh, it's the first time I'll see Arizona this year um, good young ball club and they've got one of the best pitchers in baseball. And um, they got a chance. San Francisco, kind of surprise. You know, last year they lost 100 games, I think it was. But the year before, they won 106 games. So they're kind of like up and down. Uh, not really any big names on that team. Uh, they went after uh, a couple players. Well, they actually went after a Judge. You know, Judge in the offseason couldn't make a deal with him. And so they basically just whatever they could pick up and they melded it all together. Pretty good manager. Um, I, you know, I think San Francisco's got a, at least got a chance to catch it in Arizona or LA. Four and a half is nothing. Uh, 10, yeah, 10 and a half. I think they're going to be sellers. I think they're going to get rid of some of the big names you know that their contracts are going to be up and they'll probably get some young ball club i saw a figure the other day on mlb network that in like in five years or three years or something with all the contracts they've got they're going to be really old you know uh they're going to have ball players at the end of their contracts at 36 and 37 38 years old and so they need to get younger. And I think Sosa is a free agent this year. And I don't think they may be able to sign him. I don't know. But um, they, they're going to dump some contracts. Well, they're playing better than Oakland and Sansa City. Put it that way. Okay. Well, Tour de France, the Tour de France finally ended. Um, yeah, I watch. I watch a podcast every day. That has Lance Armstrong and Lance Armstrong's uh, lieutenant, uh, domin uh, dominist, a uh, uh, guy named George Hincappy, which I always like George Hincappy quite a bit. And they go through each stage, you know, after the stage, you know, and, you know, it's, it's fun to see Lance and George. And I don't care what you say about them, you know, Lance, you know, he won seven tours, okay? And I just finished a book on Jan Urich. A, a German that that wrote against Lance for close to ten years, and they were all doing it. They were, they were all doing the EPO deal and some other stuff. And so Lance just happened to be controversial because he he was one thing he was an American, and he won so many tours. And the you know obviously the French don't like that. And not only that, it's Lance was kind of his own worst enemy. You know, he was, yeah, he would say some stuff and, you know, and, you know, just to be, be rebellious, okay? And so the, probably if he would have, now George, well, he admitted he took, you know, EPO and stuff, but everybody else on the team was too. And he, he has wrote up, he just wrote an apology on his website and that was it, okay? He says, yeah, I did it and that was it. But Lance, you know, he kept on denying it and stuff. But it's 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 a good podcast, you know. And they, but it, 
Yeah. And, you know, there's a, there's, you know, he has a, he has a couple podcasts. One's called the move and the other one is, you know, and then he, and that's a, uh, weekly podcast. He has, he has completed a, um, a series of guests he had on there on transgenderism. Okay. And he had, you know, he had all the points of use. He said pro, you know, and pros and cons. And he had Caitlin, he had Caitlin Jenner on there. And then, you know, and, and that, that was got some controversy, but, you know, Lance has said, Hey, I just want people to start talking about it. Okay. His, his opinion, he didn't really say what his opinion was, but, you know, but he's just had, you know, discussion about it. And then right now he's doing, the women are doing the Tour de France. So that just started today. Okay. And so he's got another podcast on that. And then he's got about three or four podcasts going on and he's got some sponsors too. You know? Yeah. He's got some sponsors. He's got a bicycle. He's got a bicycle company that does sells road bikes and then, um, and then there's, um, some, uh, supplements, you know, that, that, you know, so I don't know if he owns these companies or what, but I don't think he owns a couple of them, but you know, he, it, it, it's nice to get it. And he has guests on there. So it's, it's mm. a decent podcast, but the tour is over with. So, you know, I mean, it, it, it's a struggle, you know, it's three weeks long, you know, every day. Yeah. And then what else going on? Um, you know, uh, the deal with, you know, baseball course and then, uh, you know, the, the electric bike, you know, there's always, you know, there's a ton of podcasts out there on electric bikes, you know? Yeah. Some of them are good. Some of them are decent. I thought about starting one, but I'd have to buy me a GoPro, you know? Yeah, the this guy I watch all the time, Russ is right. He uses a GoPro, but it gets hot after about a half hour, 45 minutes. He has about 45 minutes. He has to shut it down because, you know, even the battery swells in those. So maybe this other one is a better brand. What's the name of the brand? Okay, so. Yeah, he puts his on his chest. He has a he has a chest harness. You know, he tried the head deal and he said it didn't work out too good. The the but putting it on his chest seems to be better, you know. His audio, I will say his audio, you know, he is in Chicago and his family owned a slew of stereo stores in Chicago at one time. You remember when those were popular back in the seventies and eighties? You know, everybody had to have a Marantz or something, you know. And and so he has a lot of knowledge on audio. And like Leo Laporte always said, he says, the hell with the video. The audio is the most important stuff, right? And yeah. 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 This guy's just... 
this guy just rides his bike. You know, he I've had a lot in common with him. He's 65 years old and he's had a knee, he's had a knee replacement. And he's a heavy guy. Okay. And so he rides around uh, rolling metal Chicago mostly. Okay. And he just talks most of the time. You know, he reviews bikes, but he just talks. And he talked about anything. The other day he was getting some Chinese food. Okay. He's Chinese, okay? And so he's getting some Chinese food. The other day he went to the post office and he just talks. And then, you know, he talks about a bike and, you know, they keep on sending him bikes. He's got like 20 bikes in his house, you know. He's trying to sell them so he can, because they, you can't ship them back because the post is, the shipping's too much. So the bike manufacturers just, just keep the bike and sell it after you do the review. Yeah, yeah. So if you live in the Chicago area, you can get some pretty good deals on an electric bike, you know. But then, you know, but you know, I, you know, you know, we're getting up to the in baseball, getting back to baseball, but we're coming up to dog days of summer here in August, and that's where you pretty much separate the men from the boys because they're going to be after the trading deadline. Okay, the rosters are going to expand, and you're going to see a lot of young kids come brought up, and then you're going to see some trades so they can have those guys for the stretch run. And then we get in the playoffs, you know, that's the month of October, you know, the first two weeks in October, and then we get in the real series. Okay. And we don't know what that's going to be. So, you know, and politics wise, hate to get into politics, but thank God Congress is going to recess for the month of August. So we won't have to put up with all that crap until after labor, you know, after labor day. Right. Yeah. When when is that? Do you know when that's going to launch? Yeah. But hey, one more thing I wanted to say is that there's a cardinal great. He played for Philadelphia, but his best years were the Cardinals. Scott Rowland, he played third base. Okay, he goes into the Hall of Fame today. Yeah, he got yeah he gets yeah he got voted into the Hall of Fame. So they're they're having their Hall of Fame ceremonies now, along with a guy named Fred McGriff. Fred McGriff basically he played with the Kansas City Royals and some other teams, Atlanta Braves. Okay, when the Royals were good with under George Brett and stuff. They called him the crime dog. You remember the old, you know, McGriff, the the the, dog, the crime dog, okay? Good ball player. Yeah, but Scott Rowland was a hard-nosed ball player, played third base, really, really good third defensive third baseman and a good offensive ball player, too. He played for the Cardinals, like, from 2000 to about 2010, something like that. Um, you know, if you go to Bush Stadium, his number's out there on the wall. You know, his, his number's been retired. Um, just a good ball player. Cincinnati boy. He's from, well, he's from Ohio, small town, Ohio. Just all around good guy. Okay. And um, he goes in the Hall of Fame and deservedly, and deservedly so. So he, need, he needed to be in a long time ago. So he's a good ball player. So I'm, you know, hats off to, uh, you know, Scott Rowland. Well, the great, the green monster has been very, very good lately. Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, we had some. My uh, brother-in-law's son came down from Portland. That was interesting. How liberal Portland is, okay? And that was an interesting conversation. And they're pulled over there. Somebody threw some trash in it, and so they had to shut it down. So he he called up yesterday afternoon and said, hey, "Can we go to the green monster?" 
And they, I go, yeah, sure, we'll go out there. So, we'll, you know, we'll, yeah. So the Green Monster is is doing well. We still got the we still got the crime scene out there. We're back in April. There was a leak, and they dug a trench from the from the clubhouse to the pool. Okay, in order to fix the leak, and they the dirt. You know, somehow the dirt they didn't get all the dirt. I mean, it, it needs dirt. Okay. And it's got a crime scene tape on it. We still got that. But, hey, you know, living in the projects like this, hey, what do you expect? Okay, Danny. So long. And see you next time. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.